So uh, I want to thank God that everything went smoothly. Uh, and, you know, the trip has always been such an exciting encounter with the Lord. Ah, Prophet Robert is here. Hi, Prophet Robert. Yeah, now, yeah, yes. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Well, it's good to see you guys back from Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim, yes. Hallelujah. Um, you were there at a very critical time. And Amen. God, is God who rescued you, <laughs> literally rescued you <laughs> by the hand of God. Wow. Uh, we thank God. We thank God. To everybody, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. It's good to be together again and um, to speak about the things that everybody is asking. Is this the beginning of the end of the world, the battle of Armageddon? What's going on in Israel? Is, is this um, the final showdown um, that will lead to the return of our Lord and Savior? These are critical issues that demands a biblical answer. Therefore, let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for bringing us together, together in your presence, to worship the King, the Almighty, the everlasting Father, the creator of the heavens and the earth. You redeemed us with the precious blood of your Son. You reconciled us to God our Father. You made us join heirs with Christ Jesus, more than conquerors. In Christ Jesus. We are the most blessed people to live in these last days. To see biblical prophecy being fulfilled. To participate in the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. To be alive in this hour. Thank you for the privilege that you've given us. We thank you for our coming together again in your presence. To share the things that you are doing right now in our world as signs of the times are being fulfilled, we need you to give us revelation and illumination of your Holy Spirit so we can understand our place, our role in the end of days. What you've called us to do as we see the signs of the times being fulfilled, we're asking for our part, our role, our our. our assignment. So Father, thank you that you will reveal these things as we share tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, as you all know, we're living in such a time that um, every one of us need to know what time it is. I'm talking about the divine timeline. What is happening today as we watch the events in, the, in Eastern Europe, the conflict there with Russia. We look at what's going on now in Israel. Nations rising against nations. Kingdom against kingdom. Political instability. Global um, financial instability. We're seeing things that indicate the imminent return of our Lord and Savior. This is why our coming together is extremely important uh, especially right now, tonight, today. Because today, the sign in Revelation chapter 12 has just taken place in the consolation two hours ago. We are now ended the, the final Shemitah in the sense that we are now beginning to see signs in the heavens that confirm the hour of our visitation that the Lord is coming back soon and very soon. And uh, the, the sign in the heavens, speaking of the, the war in heaven, the conflict on the earth, uh, the dragon going after Israel, Israel being surrounded from, from every side to be destroyed. Daniel chapter 12 talks about Michael, the archangel, stand up. He's standing up right now, and that there will be great, great uh, tribulation, such as never been since the beginning of time. It talks about Jacob's trouble. Jesus spoke about when you see Jerusalem surrounded. Are we seeing these things? 
Are they happening? The answer is yes. Can we discern clearly from a biblical perspective the interpretation of every event that's taking place, not only events on the earth, but events in the heavens? Tomorrow, the ring of fire across parts of America. The ring of fire is the, the moon and the, and the sun creating this solar eclipse that is rare, which is called the ring of fire. What does that mean? It, mean, it's, it means the, the moon represents Israel. The sun represents the Gentiles. It's this coming together of a conflict, ring of fire, the bloodshed, the crisis, global crisis that will center on Israel. It's happening as I'm speaking. This is why this, this particular session is extremely important to understand that the things we've been talking about, we, we've been sharing the timeline, and now we are in the last Shemitah, as I said in my last meeting, that Tishri 1, Rosh Hashanah, was the beginning of the final Shemitah, the final seven years. We are in it, and the signs in the heavens, there are signs in Israel, signs all over the world. We are now in the most critical time in all of human history. Never has any generation come so close to the final showdown between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness, between the people of God and the world in, that has rebelled against him. Now we're about to see amazing things happening. That's why it's extremely important that we, we come to understand understand these things in a way that we can prepare and position ourselves based upon biblical revelation. Israel's timeline to Psalm 83 war, the timeline, because everything has to do with the timeline. Why? Because God is a dead setter. God has times and seasons that he has preordained that are revealed in scripture for the people of God. It's a, it's a classified um, document. The, the prophecies are concealed. It's classified information to be decoded, decoded by the Holy Spirit, to be understood by revelation. That's why we're going to go through the, 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 the biblical timeline concerning the end of time and the clock the prophetic clock, the messianic clock is Israel. We understand what time it is when we look at Israel. Everything that's happening in the world is defined by what, with what's happening in Israel. Because God said Israel is a clock, a messianic clock, the clock to the end of time, to the end of days, to the end of history. That is why we have to go to Israel to begin to really lay out a, a clear picture so that not, not one child of the king of kings would miss out because they did not understand what time, did not understand what God expects of them, because God has revealed all those things. Jesus said, I've told you all things. He has told us all things. And I am going to walk you through with this biblical timeline for Israel, which is a biblical timeline for the nations of the world. Because what happens in Israel will affect every person on the face of the earth. That's why understanding Israel's timeline is to understand the world timeline, is to understand the prophetic timeline, is to understand why things are happening. Because we see these events like Berchezer. He saw the handwriting on the wall, but he did not understand the interpretation. We see the events that are taking place. We see uh, things happening in the Middle East. We see things happening in, in, in America and in different nations. We, we see signs in the heavens. 
but nobody gives us interpretation. The Bible gives us interpretation of those things because they are signs of the times. These are things that God has preordained, preset from creation to signal to us the end of time. The ring of fire tomorrow morning for us here in, in America, a sign of the end of time, a sign of the coming conflict, nuclear conflicts, the final showdown between nations, between the East and the West and the Kings of the East and the, and the West, all coming together, all encoded in scripture. That's why understanding scripture, understanding the biblical timeline concerning Israel will help us where we are in terms of what we do with our lives, our investments, our finances, where do we go, what do we do? All those things can be defined by looking at Israel because Israel gives us the, the answers to world events, to the timeline, what time it is, as it was revealed to Daniel, the timeline to the end of time. God says, I'll gather the Jewish people back home as a sign of the end of time. In 1917, Palestine was delivered by the hand of God from the Ottoman occupation. That was the initial sign that the end of time had begun. That now we are on the trajectory to the end of days, to the fulfillment of all biblical prophecies. So 1917, we see God delivering Palestine in anticipation of the Jewish people returning because he said i will gather you back to your land the fulfillment of that began in 1917 when god literally uh delivered palestine from the occupation of the ottoman empire and so it created the opportunity then for 1947 1917 and 1947, November the 29th, the General Assembly of the United Nations passed a resolution to create a homeland for the Jewish people back in their ancient land. That was an act of biblical of proportion in terms of the fulfillment of what God has said 2,500 years ago that he will gather back his people in their land at the end of time. So that began the process of moving towards the end of time. They, they, they Jews declared the rebirth of their nation in 1948, May the 14th. 600,000 Jews were in the country. They were given a very small portion of the of the land that God gave to them. And immediately, 300 million Arabs in the region, nations in the region, all of them declared war on 600,000 Jews to wipe them out from the face of the earth, to eradicate them, to, to make sure that there would never be another a return of the Jewish people to the ancient land that God gave them. So the nations of the world, 300 million of them, went against 600,000 600, Jews in the land. And God miraculously delivered them from 300 million coming against 600,000. That's a miracle of biblical proportion. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is a great God. God said it, and nobody was going to change, turn the clock back. Nothing that the nations of the world could do to stop what God said. It is God who defended the 600,000 Jews in 1950 in the War of Independence. Now we come to another major, major war in 1967. Again, the 300 million Arab nations, Arab people, declared war on a handful of Jews 
in the country. Again, God delivered Israel because Israel is back in the land because God said it. God brought them back. God will keep them back in the country. That's a sign of the greatness of our God and the faithfulness of our God. That he promised he would gather them back and he gathered them back in the land. And that he promised that he would keep them in the land until Jesus comes back. That he will protect them and he will fight for them until Jesus returns to Israel when the Jews are in the land. So we see in 1967, God gave them Temple Mount to prepare for the third temple. A very historic battle. The war that lasted only six days because God works in six days. In six days, the war was over. It was a divine intervention, again, to fulfill biblical prophecy. Why did he give them Temple Mount? Because there will be a temple on Temple Mount in our day. In this Shemitah, there will be a temple in Jerusalem. And he gave them the Temple Mount that they lost in AD 70. For the first time since AD 70, in 1967, the Jews repossessed Temple Mount. These are miracles that only God can perform. These are things that get us excited to see the faithfulness of our God, to see that God is not going to change his mind, be pushed back by the will of man. His will is being done on the earth. The existence of Israel in the land of Israel is an act of God, irrevocable. God gave them a covenant that cannot be broken. And so we see the fulfillment of that covenant. We see the, the hand of God at work in history. People say, where is the God of Elijah? Here is the God of Elijah. Where, where is the God of Israel? There we see again God's love for his people. That he has not abandoned them, he has not forgotten them, he has not rejected them, that he is still the Holy One of Israel. And we among the nations have been called out, the ecclesia called out, to be members of the commonwealth of Israel, to be one people with Israel. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has become our God. We are the children of Abraham by, by faith. Therefore, whatever happens to Israel is affecting the family because we are the family of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We are the elect of God on the earth. We are the ones that God has separated, just like he separated Abraham. Now he has separated all of us from among the nations to be part of the commonwealth of Israel. One new man, Jew and Gentile. So to understand the issues of Israel is to understand our future, our place in the divine economy, what God requires of us in this time, in this season, as it pertains to Israel. 67, they got the, 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 the Temple Mount, and um, they, um, they are preparing now for building the third temple. In order to build the third temple, there was yet another thing that had to happen to fulfill biblical prophecy. This is a, a biblical prophecy timeline, a timeline of the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. I'm talking about concrete evidence of God's work in history, in time, fulfilling his word, this is why it's exciting. This is not just uh, out there. It's real, it's concrete. The fulfillment of biblical prophecy confirms the validity of biblical prophecy. It, it, it validates every prophecy. It validates the, 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 our call unto him that he who is faithful to Israel 
will be faithful to us. That's why his work with Israel tells us as his children, the, the elect of the father among the nations. He tells us that we have a glorious place. We have a future that nobody can stop. Nobody can steal from us. Nobody can hinder us. That he that called us is faithful, just like he's faithful to Israel. That he that called us will not abandon us. We see that in Israel, God is not abandoning them. We see them going through these great tests. All of us are going through tests. And all of us are experiencing the same power that delivered Israel in 1950. The power that delivered Israel in 1967. It's the same power that's at work in us as the commonwealth of Israel. The elect of God among the nations. Those who have been called the children of Abraham. We don't belong to any nationality. We belong to the family of God. We are citizens of heaven, citizens of the kingdom of God. As citizens of the kingdom of God, we are the children of Abraham, the elect of the father. So we rejoice in seeing the hand of God, delivering the children of Israel to tell us that he will deliver us. If he could deliver the children of Israel, he would deliver us. This God gives us the confidence to know that our God will not fail because he has not failed Israel. That our God will keep covenant. He will keep covenant with us. This is how we know the faithfulness of God. This is how our faith is built up and strengthened because we've seen the hand of God doing great things with his people. As Abraham was chosen, we are chosen. As God protects Israel, he protects us. This is why when we look at what God's doing in our modern times with the children of Israel, we are encouraged, we are strengthened, because we see the goodness of God, the grace of God, regardless of the children of Israel. It doesn't matter whether they believe in Jesus, don't believe in Jesus. God believes in them. He is preparing to meet with them. And Romans eleven twenty six 26 says, all Israel will be saved. Every Jew is going to be saved. God said it. Now, when I say all Israel, I'm not talking about every Jew. I'm talking of the Israel of God, those whom God knows, the true Israel, not the synagogue of Satan or those who say they are Jews, but they're not Jews. Only God knows the true Jews, the, the Israel of God, all the Israel of God will be saved. So there is no problem in regards to the salvation of the Jewish people. God already says, I'm going to save them. All Israel will be saved. That's why we celebrate with them now. Because we, we see what God has already told us. That don't worry about anything. They are going to be all saved. I said it. I'm going to do it. Right now, I have blinded them. I blinded the children of Israel. Until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. Romans chapter 11, verse 25. After the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. He says, verse 26. Romans 11, 26. All Israel then will be saved. So there is redemption of all Israel in our time, in our season. This is the good news. That's why we cannot judge Israel based upon what's going on in Israel, based upon their spiritual condition. We cannot do that because God says all Israel will be saved. I have a plan for Israel to save them and to sanctify them and to bring the knowledge of my son Jesus to them. They will see him whom the peers. God's going to reveal himself to the Jewish people, reveal Jesus Christ to the Jewish people, and every Jewish person is going to be saved. That is the good news concerning Israel. It doesn't say all America will be saved, but it says all Israel will be saved. That's why when we deal with the issues of Israel, they are extremely important because they are issues that tell us how awesome our God is. Look at the figures here. Of how outgunned they were and how God outgunned them. I mean, the, the, the figures there just show you that our God is an awesome God. They, they were outnumbered in the guns, in the, the in their tanks, outgunned planes, everything, soldiers, everything. They were outnumbered. It was only, you know, a handful of Jews against them, four or five hundred million. Two billion in particular Muslims in the world. 
all against Israel. This shows you the the awesomeness of our God, the greatness of our God. Our God is an amazing God. Our God is an awesome God. He's worthy of all praise. He does wonders on the earth. Things that have no human explanation. How did they overcome? The odds were against them. There was no way they could overcome in 1950, 1967, in, 19, in 1973. Again, the, all the Arab nations went against them. And again, they were defeated. This is reading the Old Testament and seeing the stories of the Old Testament replicated in our times. The things that happened in the days of David, in the days of old, are happening today again with the children of Israel. Because the children of Israel were raised to be a testimony to the nations of the faithfulness of God. Salvation is of the Jews. That's why God has a very special place for the Jewish people, a role that they must play so that the nation of the world will know that our God reigns. The story of Israel gives us historical evidence of the greatness of our God, of the faithfulness of our God. It is as we see what he did with Israel that we know that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That is why we ask Jesus to come into our lives to save us, to sanctify us, to be our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because he alone overrules in the affairs of men. He alone is exalted, and none is exalted above him. That is why as we look at what's going on, we see another major miracle. In 135 AD, Emperor Hadrian declared that Jerusalem will never again be the capital of the Jewish people. By imperial decree, he said the Jews will never ever again make Jerusalem their capital. He also said the Jews will never be allowed to return to Jerusalem and to Palestine by imperial edict. He declared that the Jews will never again be allowed to be on Temple Mount. That was Emperor Hadrian in 135 AD. And since that time, they've been in the wilderness of nations. And in 1967, God gave them again Temple Mount. And the Emperor Hadrian said, Jerusalem will never become again the capital of the Jewish people. And in 2017, Donald Trump, like Cyrus of old, made that Cyrus decree that Jerusalem will again become the capital of the Jewish people. From 135 AD to 2017, First time since one since 135 AD, Jerusalem became the capital of the Jewish people. To fulfill biblical prophecy, God removed the decree had to be removed by Cyrus, Donald Trump. In 2017. And it is Donald Trump who in 2020, I'm going to add something here, who in 2020 made the first the treaty with many, the Abrahamic Accord. Rosh Hashanah 2020, the beginning of the 70th week of Daniel. The final week of the 
domination of the world by the Greek or Roman powers, European powers, Western powers. We are now halfway to the completion of the 70th week of Daniel. At the very critical moment, Tishri, this month of Tishri, the beginning of the Jewish year. This is critical because it's at that very moment 5784, the beginning of the last Shemitah, the last seven years, the beginning of the last three and a half years of the times of the Gentiles coming to an end, the end by a Jewish leader, a Greek or Roman Jewish antichrist from the tribe of Dan who will be the leader of the new world order in 2026, 27. Therefore, the wars and rumors of wars, a preparation of the rising of a new world order, one world religion, one world economy, one world currency, one world government, it's all being formed at the end of the times of the Gentiles. That's why the, the world is really preparing for the rising up of the Babylonian rebellion of Nimrod, the creation of an, a one world government, one world economy, one world currency based upon 666 biochip. Uh, um, what is 66 biochip? It is the new universal personal identification number for global tran transaction taxation that will be imposed on every person on the face of the earth to support the new world order. Now, that is moving quickly. And the only way to understand this is to look at Israel uh, look at what's happening in Israel to be able to discern the time in which we're living in. Because what happens to Israel will affect every human being on the face of the earth. For that reason, I'm going to look at the war that's going on in Israel. What does it mean? What time is it? Is this the, the Battle of Armageddon? Is this... Um, the Psalm 83 war, what, how will it affect the, 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 the global economy? How will it affect the global politics and the balance of power? What will be the impact of the present crisis in Israel, in the conflict that's going on as we are speaking right now? As we have seen the, the, Rome, the Revelation chapter 12 sign in the heavens tonight and tomorrow the sign of the the moon and, and, the, and the sun coming together to create a sign in the heavens of the conflict between the Jewish people and the gentle nations and the globalization of that conflict as we end at the final Shemitah, the final days on earth, the greatest days ever in the history of mankind. The time is short, the king is coming. And we as his people, we need to know who we are in Christ, what we can do through Christ, what we are supposed to do in these critical days. We cannot continue business as usual. These are unusual times. You require to know, you are required to know with specificity the plan and purpose of God. You, you are to, to be so aligned with the heart of God that you will be able to discern. Because your future cannot be defined by your, your nationality. Because you are in the world, but not of the world. Believers all over the world will be hunted, will be isolated, will be uh, persecuted and exterminated. There will be a cleansing 
this religious cleansing, the inquisition would take place one more time. If the times of the Gentiles are coming to an end and the beginning of the universal persecution of the believers is here and now and we're in it, how then shall we live? What shall we do? That's why as I come back, I'm going to deal with some 83 war that's going on, what it means, why it is going on, what's going to be the outcome of it, what can we expect? Because we as the people of God, we are given the understanding. Jesus said, I've told you all things. We have been told all things so that we will be ahead of the enemy and that we will be able to encourage the discouraged, those who are in confusion, those who don't know what to do, what's going to happen. We know what's going to happen because God tells us what's going to happen. And we have a responsibility because to him much is given, much is required. That means we who have received the revelation of the times and seasons and what's going, what's going on, we are responsible for those people that God has put in our lives. You are going to blossom where God has planted you. You have a responsibility in the place God has placed you. You are responsible for your family, your community, your nation. Wherever God has planted you, that's where God's going to use you. You have a responsibility for those that God has given you because you are a messenger to them. As we share these end time events, as we show from the historical events, as we show from prophetic fulfillments in, current, in our current time, so that everybody will know that the scriptures are true and that God is real and that God is at work in history, that we are his people. We are his messengers. Our hands are the hands of Jesus. Our feet are the feet of Jesus. That we are here to explain what's going on. We are here to tell the people, this is that. So that the people may know that all these things are not happening by chance. That God is at work in history. And we have an interpretation of all the events that are taking place in our day, in our time, based upon biblical prophecy. I'll be right back to talk about the 1923 uh, war that's going on in Israel, the Psalm 83 war. What does it mean? How will it impact your life, the world, the end of time, the church? Because the things that God is doing right now will impact every human being. So we being the elect of God, the, the joint heirs with Christ Jesus, the apple of his eye, we being set apart, we are to listen to the Father so that we are about the Father's business, not intimidated, not fearful, not discouraged, not anxious, that we can move forward knowing that God is with us and that these are the things that God has already told us will happen and he has told us what to do when we see these things. Because he said, when you see these things, look up. When you see Jerusalem surrounded, look up. Your redemption dwells nigh. When you see the, 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 the commotions among the nations, nations rising against nations, the east versus the west. When you see this global instability, the time to look up is come. Now I'm saying that time is here and now. I'll be back to talk about some 83 war that's going on in Israel as we are speaking right now. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Prophet. You know, you. in Amos chapter 3, verse 7, he says that surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his plan to his servant, the prophet. <laughs> and we have the prophet in our midst. I think Prophet Robert has uh, taught us much and much has been given. Uh, we also need to appreciate uh, his work to warn us, the king of the East, of what is to come. Amen. So earlier I showed you a QR code for you to bless him. Uh, if you were really touched by his teaching, uh, do support his ministry because uh, uh, every man of God needs support. And I just want to thank God for uh, the prophet in our midst that teaches us you know, the truth because much of the truth has been uh, downgraded over the years by false teaching and also by the traditions of men. So this is a uh, uh, a regular once a month a session with the prophet once a month only uh, it will be held on every second saturday of the month because 
uh, usually was on the first Saturday, but we moved to the second Saturday because for the next couple of uh, months to till, till the end of the year, uh, we are somehow uh, not available on the first Saturday of the month. Sorry, took out much of your Praise time. God. No, I'm too blessed. Uh, thank you for what you're sharing with the people because um, you were there when this war began. You um, heard the sirens. You, you saw uh, what was happening. You didn't just read it from social media. You were there. You were eyewitness to what's going on. And that's very important that it happened on the seventh day of the Feast of, of Tabernacle, which is Simcha Torah, the day of celebrating the receiving of the Torah. So this was organized to literally come against the celebration of the receiving of the Torah by, by Moses on Mount Sinai the greatest day of the feast when the Jewish people danced for 24 hours carrying the Torah, praising God for giving them the Torah. The Torah that, which is a Bible, that is our Bible. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is our God. And so the, the Hamas came against them on that day as they did 50 years ago in 1973. They did the same thing on the same day, which is they came against the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's a spiritual attack. It's saying, God, you are not God. We don't honor you. We don't care what, what you said. Your will will not be done on earth. This is what this conflict is all about. It's a conflict to, to prove that God is wrong by eradicating the Jewish people from their land and from the world. Because the devil wants to say, well, God has failed the Jewish people. He said, you return them to the land. We threw them out. We killed them all. And there are no more Jews because God says all Israel will be saved. So the devil says, well, all Israel will be dead because I'm going to destroy them. And that's why this is a spiritual warfare. This is principalities and powers and rulers of darkness that are coming against the people of God. First, the natural, which is Israel, the natural seed of Abraham. Then the spiritual, which is the body of Christ. So first we see the, the conflict going after Israel, the woman that gave birth to the son, meaning Jesus. Why is the devil mad at, at the Jewish people? Because... Salvation is of the Jews. They gave us the, 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 the word of God. They gave us Jesus. The, the apostles came from Jerusalem to the nations of the world. They died telling us Gentiles that Jesus is the Savior and that Jesus is the Lord and that he's the way, the truth, and the life. That there is no other way. There is no other truth. There is no other name. That there is only one name, the name of Jesus. Those were Jewish apostles that brought us the word of God. And that's why the devil is mad at Israel. This is why he's going, first of all, to the natural seed of Abraham, before he goes after the spiritual seed of Abraham, the elect of God among the nations, the great tribulation. First, Jacob's trouble, then the great tribulation of those with the testimony of Jesus Christ. But we thank God, we already told us, we will overcome him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, because we love not our lives unto death. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So we know where we are going. We know where we are. We know the persecution is here. And we know we'll triumph because God is with us. Just like he is with Israel. He is with us. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's the same God that is saving Israel that will save us. He's delivering Israel. He will deliver us because we see his hand at work among the Jewish people. Now, I'm us who are among the nations as part of the Commonwealth of Israel. We'll talk about our role in standing together as a family in solidarity, in supporting the members of our, our other family, in the natural Israel, supporting coming from the spiritual Israel, because we are one people in Christ, in God, who has called us all 
and chosen us. So as we come to this critical moment, it's good to have the revelation that this is a spiritual conflict. This is a biblical conflict. This is a prophetic conflict. This is the fulfillment of scripture that Jerusalem and Israel will be surrounded. And now they have begun to surround Israel to attack them from every side, including my city of Ariel that I helped build in Israel. They've come now under intense um, uh, attack. So all Israel is under attack. Will Israel survive? What will happen to Israel? Will the Jews be driven into the sea? Will all the Jewish people be killed? We know that is the agenda of the uh, fundamentalist uh, Islamic people, not all the Islamic people, but the fundamentalists, the, uh, the radical element. They are trying to encourage everyone everywhere to hunt out the Jewish people and kill them. Today was the day of, of wrath, meaning they wanted a, an uprising in Jerusalem, at Temple Mount, and in every city. We, are a, a, we had a high elect right here in America because of it. So this war is not being fought only in Israel, but in every nation, this conflict is going on. This is why it is important to have a biblical understanding of this conflict because David prophesied about this conflict 3,000 years ago. He spoke about it. How awesome is our God? I mean, 3,000 years ago, David speaks about this war. Only our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, can predict events that will take 3,000 years to come to pass. Here we are at the fulfillment of Psalm 83. This is the Psalm 83 war. At Psalm 83, first, the, the plot, the, the, the reason why they are coming against Israel. What is their agenda? What is their plot? What are they plotting to do? What is the, the end game? This, the, we don't have to listen to them because the Bible tells us what the end game is. It tells us about this plot in um, Psalm 83, 1 to 5. David says, keep not thou silent. He's talking to the Almighty God. Oh God, hold not thy peace. And be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. So these are the people that hate God. They hate the, the Abrahamic covenant. They hate that God chose Jacob instead of Esau. So the enemies of God, enemies of the covenant that God says, I'll bring you the Jewish people back. They are fighting God because the return of the Jewish people to their land was an act of God. God said, you do it. And he did it. And he said, you keep them in the land because it's his plan. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. All these plans have been planned in different capitals of the, of, of the Islamic world. They've been funded. It's not, it's not something that the Hamas would do without the rest of the Islamic world engaged, supporting, financing, training. So they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones, the children of Israel. They consulted on how to wipe out the children of Israel, how to completely eradicate the Jewish people, how to make sure that no Jew will be in Israel when Jesus comes back, that his plan to have the Jewish people build the temple will not be accomplished because they will not allow them to do it there will be a, a, an uprising throughout 
the Islamic world because the issue that this war is being fought is not about territory. It's not about land for peace. This war is a religious war. It's a conflict based upon does Israel have a right to worship on Temple Mount? Because they are threatening to have the red heifers sacrificed and start temple worship, move to Temple Mount. And that's why there is a complete uprising. It's an uprising against Israel's plan to build the third temple. Because they know that Jewish people are planning to sacrifice a red heifer next year, Passover. So they are trying to sabotage, try to eradicate every Jew to make sure that the Jews will not sacrifice, will not prepare to build the temple, and that they have to do it now and do it um, in such a way that they are they overwhelm Israel to make sure that they are completely destroyed so that they cannot go back to Temple Mount and worship there. That's why this is no longer a, a Palestinian issue. It's an Islamic issue. It's a religious issue. It's a global issue because it's to do with the temple. They, they made all these plans to destroy Israel. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation. Isn't that what they must say? We're here to make sure that there will never be Israel again. Let's destroy them as a nation, destroy them as a people. This is the plan. And David saw this plan 3,000 years ago. And he talks about it and he reveals it that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. In other words, complete eradication of the Jewish people, the murdering of all the Jewish people, the final Holocaust is what they're talking about. They're not talking about land. They don't, it's not about land. They're talking about the eradication of all the Jews, wiping out the Jewish people from the face of the earth is the plan of the devil. And this is the plan that you saw and that you're seeing right now taking place in Israel. Attacks coming everywhere. They've consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. This confederate, this coalition is a coalition against the almighty God, the maker of heaven and earth, a covenant keeping God who said, I will return you to the land and that you will build me a temple on Temple Mount in the end of time, the third temple. And these nations have gathered together to say, let's wipe them out so that they will not build the temple. And the devil says, I don't want God to be a God that keeps covenant. I want him to break his covenant by us wiping out the Jewish people, making it impossible for them to build the third temple and making it impossible for them to say, this is what God said. He said, he will return us back to the land. We're back in the land. The devil says, I'm making sure that you are not in the land. I'm going to wipe you out completely. So this war is a war against the almighty God to prove God wrong. Who will want to prove God wrong except the devil himself? That's why this is a spiritual attack on Israel. This is a demonic attack on Israel. This is the, the, the dragon going after the woman that gave birth to the son and the son being Jesus. The son that was caught up to heaven and the sign of, the, of Revelation chapter 12 happened now three hours ago in the consolation amazing just like revelation 12 says it happened a couple of hours ago and it's going to lead to the to this ring of fire solar eclipse tomorrow that pass through america and uh, the passage is taking i, I could take another night a whole night talking about it if, how it's going to go right across uh, america through this, in, when, it, when, it, when it exits, it exits at a, a, a place called birth, meaning the birthing of the end time, the end of, of the world. It's, it's amazing if you follow the, this, um, this ring of fire tomorrow and look at the cities they're gonna, 
it's going to pass through the actually prophetic names, biblical names that is to do with the end of time, the birthing of the seven, the, 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 the final Shemitah, the birthing of the final days, the birthing of the new world order, the end of time. So this war has to do with the birthing of the new world order. The agenda of Satan now has begun. The eradication of the Jewish people. It is, it is the foundation of the battle of Armageddon. This is the, the turning point. This is the beginning of the battle of Armageddon. First, this will take place and we'll talk about how it's going to end for a season and why it's going to come to an end, how it's going to come to an end. We will show you that and you will follow it on, on the news. You will see what I'm going to tell you on the news because God told me beginning of this year in February at the Jerusalem prayer breakfast in Houston to tell that international conference that there will be a major breach of the Israeli defenses and many Israeli cities will be attacked, especially, particularly Tel Aviv, that their focus is to cripple Tel Aviv in order to cripple the nation of Israel, destroy their economic infrastructure in, in Tel Aviv. That's the vision. That's the plan that is being worked out right now. That's why they're penetrating into Israel in order to blow up Tel Aviv because it's the, 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 the nerve center of Israel. So our prayers should focus really on the protection of Tel Aviv because that's the thing they are after is destroy, destroying Tel Aviv. And the Lord told me this war was coming and I told everybody and called for global prayer in February because God reveals these things before they happen. God will not allow the, anything to happen without revealing it to his prophets, to his servants, the, the prophets. God wanted me to warn the people so that when they see it happening, they wouldn't be able to say, yes, the Lord told us about this. Just like when I was in Estonia in 2019, the Lord to told me, tell them that the war is gonna be, be breaking out in Ukraine in three years. And exactly in three years, the war came to Ukraine. So God will speak. God is speaking. And these things are revealed by God in scripture and revealed by the Holy Spirit to us. So now we see there is a plot against Israel. Uh, the end game is to wipe out all the children of Israel and to make sure that there is no red heifer sacrifice, there is no temple, and there is no, no Jew to deal with because there'll be no Jew for Jesus to come back to. Psalm 83, 6 to, to 8 tells us the nations that are united in fighting Israel. Who are these nations? Who are these ancient nations, ancient people? We are, we are given their ancient names, but that is a, particularly, that is a, the Hamas, that is the 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 the, 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 the Jordanians, that is uh, that is the the Syrians, that is the the, the Iranians, that is the 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 the, the, the people that uh, of of different nationality, including finally the Soviet Union in the final showdown that Russia and Turkey would join them. These are the people that he mentions and gives them their ancient name. The, the tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites, all these Palestinians and, and, and Hamas of Moab and the Hagnites. Gabel, Ammon, and Amalek, which is the Hamas in, in, in the Gaza Strip. That's where Goliath came from. These are Goliath's people. They were always against Israel. They always fought. And that's how David became the king by fighting Goliath from the Gaza Strip. The Philistines, the Palestinians, with 
with the inhabitants of with the inhabitants of Otire, which is uh, which is Lebanon. These are coming together with a simple agenda to wipe out Israel and destroy them. Asha, which is Turkey, which is right there together with Persia, Iran. These were the same people in that region, ancient times. Also joined with them. They have helped them, the children of Lot, the Palestinians. So they're coming together to help the Palestinians. We're seeing that from Persia. We're seeing the, the Iranians. We're seeing the, the, the Lebanese. We're seeing the, 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 the people in, in, the, in Syria. We're, we're seeing all the, the, the radical Shiite Muslims all joining, all funding this and encouraging the, 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 the beginning of the Battle of Armageddon. This is the battle that will go on for the next seven years, and I'll go into in depth on that because we know the end game of this conflict. This conflict right now is going to end because God's going to win. God's going to fight for them. God's going to defend them. Yes, they're outnumbered. They're outgunned, but God is a majority our God. So we look at what's going on in Israel. We're seeing other nations jumping in and all united with one with one heart to eradicate Israel, to destroy Israel. And God has already, will tell us right now what's going to happen in this conflict. Psalm 83, verse, five, verse 9 to 11. Do unto them as unto the Midianites, as, Cesare, as to Cesarea, as to Jablin, and the, at the brooks of Kishon, where Cesarea was killed in Jablin, in a war of exterminating again the Jewish people. Eradication of the Jewish people has always been the agenda of the surrounding nations the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hevites, all these Kibomites that have remained in the land, they fought Israel for centuries. They're still fighting Israel because they do not want to see God's plan for Israel in the land of Israel. And they've tried to eradicate them for centuries. This is not new. They've always done that. Now, will God allow that to happen? The scripture tells us very clearly that he is going to do to them what he did to these kings which perished at Edo. They became as dung for the earth. They were all destroyed, became as dung. That's what's going to happen. God did it before, he's going to do it again. Make their nobles like Oreb and like Zeb, yea, all their princes, Ezeba, Ezalmon, Ezalmana, these who were destroyed by the Lord in a war that Israel was outnumbered and outgunned and got in the end. We're talking about the same things that happened 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago. The same people, the same con the same agenda, eradication of Israel, because the devil is at it again. He was at it before, and he's at it again to wipe out the children of Israel, to prove God wrong. That's all it is, is to prove God wrong. It's not that the, the Palestinians have no land or the, the children of, of, of Ishmael, because Abraham said, oh, my son Ishmael, because God says, I'm going to give the, the land to Isaac. And then Abraham cried out to God and said, God, what about my son Ishmael? Oh, my son Ishmael. And God says, okay, I will adjudicate over the issue of land for peace. I will give 
Ishmael, 12 nations. I'll give Ishmael 300 times more land. But this little piece of land, I'm going to give it to Isaac. So has the land issue been adjudicated? Yes. Was God fair for the Palestinians and gave them more land, more oil, more money, more everything? God has done that because they are the children of Abraham and God has blessed them. But still they want to have, God says, I'll give them 12 nations. Now, now they want to have a 13th nation and take over the inheritance of Isaac. That's why God will not allow it. It's not like, oh, look at the Palestinians. They're being thrown out. They don't have anywhere to go. They don't have, have room. Why would God do this? Well, God, God did solve this problem once and for all. He gave them 300 times more land. He gave them 12 nations. He gave them more oil than anybody. More money. Because they're seed of Abraham. Now, that's why God's going to destroy them because they are not thankful to what God did for them in blessing them. That they want to go after Isaac's little portion and take it and wipe him out. Well, God will not allow that. That's why all the nations of the world that support the Palestinian agenda, they are supporting the, the idea that God was not fair, that God did not do right, that they can correct God and say, we have to give them Isaac's land. We have got to cut it in half. Well, God says, no, because I've given Ishmael and Esau more land than Isaac. That's why when we talk about land for peace, that issue has been already adjudicated by the ancient of days. Because Abraham immediately said, oh, Ishmael, oh, my, my, what will he do? Where will he go? God says, I'll give him 12 nations. And I'll give him all the money, all the land. That's why the Palestinians have a place. Who are they? Palestinians are Jordanians. They were, jo they were Jordanians living uh, on the West Bank of the River Jordan. They have Jordanian birth certificates. They were always Jordanians. Now, these were Jordanians who were living on the other side of the River Jordan. So they do have a country. They do have a, a, a land given to them, which belongs to them. So to try to eradicate that decision of God and the blessings that God has given to the, to, to, to the Palestinians, he has blessed them. He has given them a land. And this way, Palestinians living on the West Bank, now it's time to go back to their land and because Israel has come back. It's the Lord's plan. It is the Lord's solution that the nation of the world do not want to look at that the people do not want to honor God and say, let's go back to scripture and find out how God adjudicated this land issue. Because we cannot overrule God. Who are we to overrule God and say, God, you're wrong. We're right. You, 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 you are not fair. We are fair. How can man be better than God who created um, this whole world and created the Palestinian and the Israelis? That's why we need to have a biblical understanding to be able to answer the questions because people see what's going on and they start blaming the Jewish people because they say that it's not fair. Well, it is fair. Why? Because God has given them 300 times more land. It's in scripture. It's defined. The land has already been adjudicated to them and more land given to them. That's why God will not allow them to prevail over, over Isaac. God will not allow it because it's not fair. It's not right. That's why we know the outcome of the war is that they're going to be destroyed, just like those in ancient times who tried to destroy Israel. Now, the goals of this anti-Israel coalition, what does Psalm 83 say about it? Verse, verse 13 Verse 12, who said, let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. What is, does that mean? 
Let us take Temple Mount, where God says, I'll put my name here forever. What is the agenda of this coalition against Israel right now? Is to take the control of Temple Mount and to stop Israel from building the third temple. And here the scripture tells us what is the end game? What is the desire? Is it about land? No, it's about Temple Mount because they have the, the Dome of the Rock, which is the abomination that will be, bring the desolation. And they don't want the Temple of God to be built next to the Dome of the Rock. That's why they're fighting. That's why all the Islamic world is at war to stop the plan of God for the third temple. You say there will be a third temple next to the Dome of the Rock on Mount Moriah. God said it, that settles it. There is no other thing that, that is the only thing that's gonna happen. It's going to happen. The Jewish people will have a temple on Temple Mount, irregardless of all the millions of people against them, all the, the two billion Muslims against them, and two billion Christians who believe in replacement theology against them. In spite of all that, they will be a temple on Temple Mount in Jerusalem. God said it, that settles it. They can go to war, they can do whatever they want. It won't work because God said there will be a temple and Temple Mount will be shared by the Jews. That means the Jews are not gonna be eradicated. The Jews are gonna be in Israel. The Jews will sacrifice. The Jews will build a temple in Jerusalem, irregardless of all the, the United Nations resolutions and all the plans of men, God's plan will prevail. God said it, that settles it. That is why it is extremely important to know that these, these plans or, that we see in scripture is the only plan that will prevail. The United Nations plan will not prevail. The, League of, the Arab League of Nations plan will not prevail. Even the, the, the United States plan for Israel will not prevail. The plan of God will prevail. God will be honored. God will be glorified. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He that was and is and is to come. He alone, he alone is the ruler. He, he, he is the one that will lift up nations and destroy nations that come against him. Any nation that goes against God will be judged. And every family that does not stand with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will not be blessed. God will bless those who bless Israel and curse those who curse Israel. That means every Christian around the world must know the truth about this conflict and must stand with Israel. They must pray for Israel. They must support Israel because that is the will of God. Because God has said it. Now, is it going to be popular? No. Is it going to be celebrated by the world? No. Are you going to be hated for doing that? Yes. Because the people do not know what scripture says. That's why we must tell them what scripture says. Because the scriptures are, are, are clear. Oh my God. Make them like, like a wheel. As the stubble before the wind. Bring an end to these people, to their plan. It's not because God does not like or does not love the Palestinian people and the, the Islamic people. He does. He just doesn't bless those who come against his plan, who come against his will, who disregard what he said, who tries to undermine what God said. That's why we know it's not going to turn out good for those who are not standing with Israel. That men may know thou, that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, art at the most high over all the earth. The art, the most high over all the earth. He alone shall be glorified. And he alone has the plan for Israel, the plan for the nations, and the plan for your life, for your future. 
He is the blessed controller of everything. He will watch over Israel. He will fight for them. Now, let's talk about what is the place of this war? What role does it play in the bigger picture of the end game? The final showdown on earth. This war will be fought. And they, at the end of this war, there is going to be a Middle East peace conference. In that Middle East peace conference, the, the players that will be at that conference, one of them will be the Antichrist. Because I told you, we are at the beginning of the last seven years. The Antichrist will be at the, at the end of this conflict. There will be a peace agreement that will be established. And there will be international peacekeeping forces coming. Those are the forces of the Antichrist that will be moving in. Jerusalem shall be trodden down by the Gentiles. So what will be the end of this? There will be a peace conference. There will be an interim agreement that will give Israel the right to worship on Temple Mount. And that will give the Palestinians uh, land for peace. And at the end of, of that, the Jewish people will then sacrifice and begin temple worship. That is the beginning of the final prophetic events that leads to the end of time. I said in my last meeting that Tishri 1, which was Rosh Hashanah, was the beginning of the last seven years. At the very beginning of the, of the last seven years, there is a war in Israel in order to create the final agreement in which the leaders that we gather together to, to, to birth this new agreement to stop the conflict is Mr. Antichrist. That will be his first major political uh, action. A historical action will be part of the signatory to the new peace agreement to stop this conflict. That is the purpose of this war. That is the trajectory of where we are, where we are going. So in this Shemitah, as we move towards uh, the end, the beginning, this is the beginning year, which began uh, on Rosh Hashanah, the year of the false peace, when the superpowers will gather together to bring about a false peace orchestrated by the Antichrist, because the spirit of the Antichrist is behind this conflict. It is the conflict that will bring forth peace, and they shall say peace and safety when there is no peace and safety. And it is a, it is a, it is a, it is a, a peace agreement that's going to, to really uh, seem to hold back the anti-Israel forces. But that will be just for a short period. In a very short period, they will rise again because they still don't like to see that temple on Temple Mount. They still don't like to see the Jewish people in the land. But the Jewish people will agree to have the Palestinians in their, with their own piece of land. And at this meeting, they will offer Israel some peacekeeping forces, European peacekeeping, American peacekeeping, international peacekeeping forces to keep the two sides apart. And those are the peacekeeping forces that will be there when Jesus comes back. It is the peace, it is this force of peace 
that to bring the, the nations of the world into Jerusalem, and Jerusalem shall be treaded by the foreign forces. And Jerusalem will be declared an international city. It, they will take away it, Jerusalem as the, Jew, as the capital of the Jewish people and make it a international city. Corpus separatum. That will be to fulfill the resolution that was made in 1949, 1950, presented to the General Assembly of the United Nations by this by Russia, which already declared Jerusalem separatum, which means separate territory precinct that belongs to the to be over to be to be controlled or to be under the auspices of the international community as an international capital. That's why the Antichrist will move to Jerusalem because Jerusalem will become an international city, the city of the Antichrist. And he will be, be ruling from Jerusalem. And that's why very soon Jerusalem will be the focus of the world. The United Nations Security Council will move from New York City to Jerusalem. Why, what will lead to that? Because the third world war that's coming will wipe out the United Nations building in New York City and the United Nations will reconvent as 10 kings and four regional leaders with the Antichrist as the head of the new world order. Now I'm bringing to you mysteries that have been hidden through the ages that you may know what time and season we're living in and what the future holds. That's why everything that's going on in the world from the, um, the global financial reset, political reset, economic reset, religious reset that's before us. We are in a time of transition from the old order to the new order. First the chaos, then order out of chaos is what's coming. And I want you to understand that God wants you to know these things. He has sent me to you to make known these things that you may be ready because now we are on the final trajectory. Now we're on the final path. Now we are in the final showdown. This, move, this whole thing will move from focused on Israel to focusing on all the rejectionists of the number of the beast. Because not only will there be a new order in Israel, there will be a political order around the world. A whole new paradigm shift is going to take place. And that paradigm shift is the fulfillment of biblical prophecy of the, the seven years of the rule of the Antichrist, the triumph of the new world order, the control of the new world order. And finally, in 2026, 27, the, the whole process will begin to change and focus on the people of God and the rejectionist Jews who reject the Antichrist as the true legitimate Messiah of Israel that will lead to the 72 months of the great tribulation and it's on time according to the to the Qumran community the essence who wrote 200 years before jesus was born they say that the antichrist will emerge in 2025 he will take center stage and he will begin to put together the new world order. That's why now we are in the preparation of the new world order and the final stage for the Antichrist to dominate the world, to bring false peace to the world. The question then is, how then shall we leave? What shall we do? Where shall we go? Is there a way out? Are there cities of refuge? What would this mean to me in my city, in my country? The Antichrist will have universal domination and control of every nation, every person on the face of the earth. It is the death of nationalism and the beginning of globalism, one world government. 
all, nat all, all nat national boundaries will be removed and everyone will receive a universal personal identification number 666 biochip. And those who do not take that will not be able to participate in the global economy. The question then is, seeing that all the signs of the times are happening in, in Israel to confirm the nearness of the second coming of our Lord and Savior. How then shall we leave? What shall we do? Is there a way out of this? Things are moving fast in Israel to fulfill the prophetic alignments that should take place. Even now, the alignments between the kings of the East and, and, and Russia and, and, uh, and Iran uh, and Palestine, it, Russia has moved into its, its sphere, according to Ezekiel 30, 38 and 39. They are coming into that alignment. And the West, we are coming into alignment with, the, with, with our own people, the NATO and, and Israel. All this is detailed out in scripture that this will happen at this time. And the division between the East and West is now becoming more clear according to the pre predictions of scripture, predictions that were given thousands of years ago to, to tell us how the new world order is going to shape up and how it's going to come out of Israel. It's going to be uh, the, the nations that stand for Israel, the nations that stand against Israel, and the conflict that will come out of that, which will be the final battle of Armageddon and the, Lord, the return of our Lord and Savior. This is a serious time to be alive if you don't know the will of God. This is a time to know the will of God. The only answer to where we are is the revelation of your identity in Christ and your destiny in Christ. The most important thing in, in your life and my life is intimacy with Jesus, to hear his voice, to abide under the shadow of the Almighty, to listen to the still small voice, because there will be a preservation and protection and provision for those who are at the center of God's will, those under the shadow of the Almighty. There will be angels on assignment. We'll see that in Israel, as God defends Israel. There they will be um, amazing things happen. In the meantime, God wants us to support Israel. They need um, bomb shelters. They need finances. They need the, the body of Christ, the elect of God among the nations to now stand with the commonwealth of Israel, one people, the people of God, Jew and Gentile, one new man. That's the hour has come. Those who love God will love Israel and stand with Israel. And members of their family and members of their, uh, their nation and uh, their government may not stand with Israel. But this is the time of division. This is a time in which God is dividing, calling out the elect, come out of her, be my people. Because God's setting up his own kingdom and his own people, the children of Abraham, Jew and Gentile. He's calling them out from among the nations. You have to hear that call and know that you are... Uh, you are not a citizen of a nation. You are a citizen, citizen of the kingdom of God. As a citizen of the kingdom of God, you have to listen to Jesus and do what Jesus tells you. And he will speak to you and he will guide you and he will lead you and he will empower you. He is on your side. The best of your years are before you because God wants to use you where he has planted you to bring much fruit, to show his glory to many people. This is the time for the greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the greatest harvest is now and here and now. First the natural conflict, then the spiritual conflict, and the victory of the people of God, the triumph of the people of God. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. We have already overcome the evil one by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, because we love not our lives unto death. May God bless each one of you as you pray for the Jewish people, not that God is on the side of the Jewish people. He said it. He will do what he said. Not to listen to the social media, the accusation, the misunderstanding, the distortion of, of what God has said in his word. The only solid word and solid solution to the Jewish people is what God said in his word. 
we stand for it is written. God said it, that settles it. So mm -hmm. there will be many voices. Everybody, Christians will be taking positions. But hear me, the only position to take is to stand with it is written. God said it, that settles it. We are to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We are to support them and bless them as the scripture instructs us to do. This is a time for the universal support of Israel by the children of God around the globe. May the Lord bless you. Father, bless your people. Anoint your people with the oil of gladness, the oil of joy. Fill them with your Holy Ghost fire. Peace in their heart. Join their spirit. May they stand together with Israel in these critical days in prayer. And asking God to glorify himself, to fulfill his word and his promise. Because we, your children, we want your will to be done. Not the will of the devil, not the will of men, not the will of government and nations, but the will of the almighty God to be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's our prayer. So, Father, bless your people. Guide and lead them now. In Jesus' name, amen. If you enjoyed this video, do subscribe by pressing this button below. You'll be the first to be informed of any posting that I make. Shalom. Goodbye.